Hey what's up guys, Steven here and welcome to my review of the Endo M1, the best pocket project I've had in my whole life, but also the most expensive one. So that little baby here retails for around 540 euro and if you're interested there's a link down below in the description. I've got it from tomtop.com, they basically sell almost everything, projectors, smartphones, tablets, so feel free to check it out, also quite competitive prices and as always the link is down below. So now let's get started and let's have a closer look at that baby here. So here this guy is and well it came in a pretty crappy box. If you have a look at the box then you would be like holy crap a 500 euro projector in that box it's just black with the logo on there and that's it. And I was like oh my god I hope it's not a crap product but then I had a look at the project and I was like damn it's really good quality. So um, here you can see it and that's the projector so I've got the golden version there's also a silver version and yeah I think the golden one is more fancy. The first thing I noticed, oh my god, the lens is very small and I thought it will be way bigger because the projection size is 15 to 300 inches, so that's um, the size of the picture you can get on the wall. So the distance the, um, between the wall and the projector, the minimum is um, 0.5 meters and the maximum is 7.5 meters, so to get the 300 inches. Um, yeah, before we have a closer look here at the projector, I want to tell you something about the specs. So it has 1000 lumens, that's actually quite okay for a portable projector, and the color temperature is 9300 Kelvin. Another good thing is that, yeah, it has um, Android integrated, so that's actually incredible. That's like a um, portable computer with a projector. Now it runs Android 4.4, um, sorry, 4.2. And it comes with a dual core 1.2 gigahertz inside. So yeah, um, that's a full system, standalone system. You can connect, for instance, USB drives or whatever to playback something. It comes with one gigabyte of RAM plus eight gigabytes of ROM. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth also on board, and two watt speakers for the sound. So it's a really standalone system. Now it supports full HD, but the native resolution is just 1280 times 800 pixels, and the power consumption, so the maximum is 60 watts, so it's also quite powerful. And as I've said, available in silver and gold. So inside of the package, you won't find too much stuff. So there's a user book, which you can see here. Now it's not even called user manual, and the font looks really crappy, so yeah, it's like you could design that user manual in 10 seconds in Word or whatever. But well, who cares? Um, it's not really needed. So it also comes with a gyroscope mouse. This is really cool, so just check it out here. And it's from the company Motion Elf M3. And yeah, it's basically a normal remote control which you can also use with Android TV boxes. So it has here a home button, back button, menu button. Um, here we have a D-pad with OK button, here to turn it on and off, minus volume, plus volume and LED. Um, here we have for instance a search button. And here we have something like a trigger. Here I think that's probably a microphone, so pretty cool um, remote control. But well, you can get those things for like 10 euro or 20 euros from Amazon or eBay. Here on the inside you have to put in two, um, yeah, two AA batteries, so I think it's called like this, probably not, um, yeah, I'm a German guy, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, here you can see the receiver, so a very small one, you just have to plug it into the USB port on the back of the projector, and then you can actually use it, but as I've told you, you could also use a normal mouse and keyboard, so it's really like an Android TV box, it's absolutely great. The next thing which is included inside the box is a power supply. The funny thing is that it is not even from the company Endor. So yeah, we can just um, unplug the cable here and let's have a look here at the power brick. So it comes here with an LED, lights up if there is power. And here on the back side, we can check it out, it's from the company Hunt Key or whatever. Um, here on the package, it actually said light on AC adapter. Maybe that's one from from um, for now what is called notebooks. I'm not really sure, but yeah, there were different companies actually on there. Um, the maximum output it's um, 19 volts, 2.1 amps. So that equals, if I'm right, 1938, so around 40 watts. Now they stated 60 watts in the spec sheet. So well, the power supply can only deliver 40 watts. And I have to say, um, the project is really strong. So yeah, for the power consumption, really, really good. Here you can see the DC in connector, so a normal one, and it's just like a notebook power supply. So if that one here breaks down, you can just go to your local electronics store and replace that. 
Then here we have the power cord and you can also unplug that and it comes with the correct one for your country. So here you can see the European one which fits perfectly well in the power sockets in my country even though it came from the US and A. Okay. Also, this one here was included for the remote control, but well, nothing special. So that's basically everything you can find inside of the package. And now let's go and let's have a closer look at the projector because this is really interesting. All right, guys, so here it is, the Endor M1. I hope I pronounced it correctly, but I've not seen a single review of this projector somewhere online on the internet. Okay, so let's get started here with the front side. Now here we have the lens and the lens is really small. I mean, just check this out. It's like a two euro coin in diameter, even less here on the inside. So we have have here um, something to focus on the top and you see you can slide um, the lens um, out and in so that works really good and it's absolutely smooth and I really like that it's not too smooth so you can adjust it very accurate. Now um, the front side here we have here some ventilation grid so um, there's a heat sink inside very tiny also there's a fan inside so if it heats up too much um, it will actually make some noise with the fan and the heat goes out here. Okay that's the front side. Now let's turn it around because on the back side we have all the connectors. So let's have a closer look at that. So here you can see all the connectors and this is really incredible. We have a lot of stuff here. First of all, let's get started with the off and on switch which is placed here. Then here on the right side, so let's go from the right to the left side, we have a headphone jack, so for audio out. But we also have SPDIF output, so also audio out. Um, here we have the um, power input jack. Here HDMI input, so you could also connect a computer monitor to the projector. Then here we have um, the Ethernet um, port. Here two USB ports, 2.0. Here VGA port. That one here is the receiver for um, yeah the remote control. Um, somehow there was no normal remote control included, so just that gyroscope thing here. But yeah, um, not a normal remote control which was stated in the user manual, so that's the only bad thing. Um, here we have, for instance, a micro SD card slot up to 64 gigabytes, and here's something to lock the device if you have it in public and you want to lock it. Okay, that are all the connectors here, and as you can see, this is like a full motherboard layout, and I think it's absolutely cool to have that in such a tiny projector. Now, on the right side of the frame of the projector, there's nothing, but here on the left side, you can see another grid, and in there, you'll find a 2 watt speaker. Now, the audio quality of the speaker is not really the best, so a bit crispy and tinny, but yeah, um, it's quite loud, so if you have people sitting around you 5 to 7 meters, they will definitely hear everything, so if you have a presentation, or you're watching a movie, it's really cool to use it. But for sure you could also use the audio out on the back side and connect it to an amplifier. So that's um, yeah the projector here from all the sides and let's have a closer look at the top side. Now the top of the device is the absolute highlight and it has such a nice finish so that's the golden version coming here with some logos, um, Texas Instruments and the Endo logo and here we have capacitive touch buttons so they light up in blue when the projector is on and that's really cool. We have here a button to yeah turn the project off, here to go back here home button, menu button, so for Android, plus and minus for um, yeah for the volume, here video, so for the input source, here we have a D-pad, left, right, up and down, and here in the middle we have the OK button. So absolutely cool, easy to operate, and also really nice blue LED backlight. Now last but not least, here's the whole thing from the bottom side, and the material of the body feels really good. It's not some hard, cheap plastic, it's like plastic with some kind of soft skin. In each corner we have rubber pads and they're a little bit sticky so the stand is really good. If you have it on a desk it's not sliding around. It feels absolutely great. Then here we have some kind of a ramp. So here a small one um, for yeah to adjust the angle and here a bigger one if you need to. And um, it has also automatic keystone so really cool as you will see later. Here a lot of ventilation holes here and fan inside to blow out the hot air. It will only start up if um, the projector gets warm and yeah, it's less than 30 decibels, so not really loud. Here, a normal sized thread, so you could use tripods with the projector if you want to. Yeah, that's the whole device here from all sides. And you've seen, it looks pretty cool. Um, definitely the highlight, the golden finish here with the capacitive touch buttons and the really small lens, where you don't think that it actually can project a nice picture. But let's just go. Let's hook it up to my test setup and then let's see how this thing here really performs. Now the project is quite noisy, so I can show you that with my dB meter. Now um, right next to the project, it's like 60 dB. If we go like 15 centimeters away, it's like still 55, 60 dB. 
So it's not the 30 decibels, whatever it's stated in the spec sheet. So it's actually quite louder and this could be annoying if you watch a movie. But yeah, well, there are many projectors which are quite noisy. Righty right guys, the projector is up and running and we're here in Android on the projector. So there's not an Android device connected to the projector, it's Android from the projector. Pretty awesome. And yeah, here you can see um, the home screen and the launcher, so it's already a bit customized for easier customization by using the remote control or the buttons. I'm currently using um, a gyroscope mouse, so yeah, um, I can use it like remote and just control here the cursor as you can see, so pretty cool. So this is the launcher. As always, you can swipe down here from the top. Here you will see USB audio in device connected. So that's actually my remote. Um, the microphone, that works pretty cool. Here we have the settings. You can see Wi-Fi, there's location-based services, but this is only based on the internet connection. Um, screenshot and the volume adjustment. So it comes with integrated speakers and we'll now just crank up the volume for the tests we do later. Okay, so let's quickly go here to the settings so I can show you what you can do here. Now, first of all, here we have Wi-Fi. So I'm connected to my home network here, and I have to say Wi-Fi is okay. It's not the best Wi-Fi I've seen, but at least it can connect to the network, but I don't get the full link speed, so it's stuck here with 18 Mbits for some reason. Um, but it finds a lot of networks and also says here a pretty good signal. So you can see Ethernet, so this is also supported, and we've tried it with PPoE and it worked pretty good. So you just need to connect your cable, your Ethernet cable, and there you go. Bluetooth is also there. Um, you see it finds all devices here in my room. So actually I have a lot of Bluetooth devices here. And yeah, um, Bluetooth works without an issue on the projector. Tethering and portable hotspots. So you could even use that if you want to. Pretty incredible stuff. Oh, sorry, I just pressed the wrong button here on the remote control. It's really a little bit hard to control all that. Okay, so back in the settings, um, we can have a look here at the display settings. So what you can adjust here is brightness, contrast, the saturation wallpaper and yeah, some screen percentage. Then let's check out storage. As I've told you, it comes with eight gigabytes of RAM, system memory, 3.2 gigabytes, and the internal storage, it's 4.8 gigabytes, and I still have 4.6 gigabytes of usable space. And you can even put in an SD card up to 64 gigabytes to extend your internal memory. So this is really just great. So here we have apps running in the background, so let's check this out. As I've told you, the projector comes with one gigabyte of RAM integrated, so I'm pretty excited about the RAM consumption. Now, while, we are to while it's loading here, I want to talk about the image quality. So the darks are really dark and the colors, they are really colorful, so everything looks really good. But um, it's not the strongest one, so you will see it later when we switch on the light. Now it's almost completely dark here, and then you get a beautiful picture, so nice colors and um, also everything looks good. But um, if you do it at daylight conditions, then yeah, it's probably a little bit too, um, too weak. Okay, sorry, it's not really loading here, the running apps in the background. Oh yeah, now it, now it does. 300 megabytes used and 700 free. So that's actually some pretty good um, optimization. And also, as you can see, um, the ROM is very clean. But unfortunately, there are no Google apps pre-installed. Okay, we can go here down a little bit. So here we have language and input, and let's check out if it's multi-language. Oh yes, it is. German, as you can see, a couple of English, wow, that's really the full Android language pack. So that's really, really good. Many, many languages in here. Okay, we even have developer options and about the phone. Okay, so probably have here some phone motherboard. With, um, not really sure which kind of processor it is. Okay, it's running Android version 4.4.2, so not 4.2. So this is right now KitKat, latest version you can get here on the projector. So there will be no lollipop and I don't think that there will be updates. But um, I checked out um, the menu, so here home screen, and here we can go to apps. And here there's a system update application. Now you can do a local update um, if you find anything about the project. I couldn't find anything online, or here you can do the online update. So yeah, your system is up to date. I'm not really sure if you will see updates for this device here because, you know, um, I couldn't really find even details about the project. It's really interesting. So, yeah, what can you do further? Um, you can go here to a media player. So this one here was pre-installed. So um, you can have here your video playback, pictures, music, and it's also like a file browser. So you can also check out here your local memory. If you have um, network um, share drives, or you could also check out your USB drive um, for music or other files. So cool stuff. So that was pre-installed. The bad thing you see, there is no Google Play Store pre-installed. There was just the app installer, which you can see right over here pre-installed. That means if you want to install applications, 
You have to download them as APK, connect an USB drive and install them. Now I'm pretty sure it's not so easy to install the Google Play Store but I will definitely try it in the future and update that on China devices. So um, I was here in the Play Store also on the internet and here yeah you can see um, browsing the web works really good so I actually wanted to check out Netflix but it um, forced me to download the application but it's just like on your smartphone so it's yeah basically the same thing you can browse the internet here you can check out all your favorite websites just the internet here is a little bit slow right now but this is because the Wi-Fi from um, the project is not really the best and I'm downloading something. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Just like on a smartphone or tablet, you can browse the internet. Now, if you press the home button, it um, opens up that little thing here. So here you can switch between the inputs. You can um, go here to play HDMI or VGA if you want to. And um, pretty cool thing, it's um, 3D ready. That means we have 2D, we have 2D, 3D. Um, I guess that's for those glasses. Um, yeah, let's switch it off and we also have SPS 3D and Tap 3D but when I switch this on I can't switch back anymore and I have to reboot but it's pretty cool and yeah, um, really cool that it supports 3D. Now here we have the auto keystone so I could also set it to manual and um, yeah, as you can see it's here like this and if I go to auto it should automatically correct that and yeah, pretty cool. Screen ratio, um, full 16 to 9 or 4 to 3. Actually, I prefer 16 to 9. And here you can also um, adjust the screen size, which I think is a really cool thing. So small or really big. And yeah, absolutely awesome that you can do that so easily here in the settings. Power, um, here we have normal and battery. So if you run it from a battery, for instance, um, then you can just reduce the power of the LED lamp. And last but not least, we have here more settings. So here you can switch the color temperature. Now it will look probably a little bit weird. So here we have warm colors, here intermediate, and here cool colors. Looks a bit green though. Okay, brightness and contrast can be adjusted here. I just cranked up the brightness a bit. And we have here the color schemes or um, red, green, blue, RGB can also be configured. For instance, if you want to have more red tones, just go for it here. So pretty cool that you can adjust all that here. Actually, I'm still really excited about the projector. Then, yeah, let's go back here. Let's go back to um, the home screen. That's a little bit confusing, so I think I have to use the back button because um, the home button, which should actually bring me back, always opens up that strange menu here. Okay, kind of strange. Let me quickly go out of here and let me close everything. So yeah, we're finally back, so I fixed it, and yeah, um, we just had a look at the browser. It also comes with a camera application, which I think is a remote camera, because it says you failed to connect to camera. But the cool thing is, you could also use a smartphone with all cast. So this is something like Miracast. You can stream the picture of your smartphone to the projector, and then immediately throw it onto the wall. Pretty cool. Um, here we have Miracast. Um, that's just the application here with some Chinese signs, so I would get rid of that. We have a normal music player integrated to play music. We'll do that a bit later from the USB drive so you can hear the sound. Um, here we have projector settings. So basically to switch the input, so to start HDMI play, play VGA, so everything you've seen before. Um, here's something like a remote control. Yeah, I'm not really sure what, what that is. And here we have a sound recorder. So it also should come with an integrated microphone. Test, test, test. Okay, so it seems that it would work, or you could also use, for instance, the microphone uh, from the gyroscope mouse. So this should actually work too. Okay, last but not least, there was an apps um, system update. And this is everything we can find here. So that are all the applications which were pre-installed, and that's the whole projector. Now, I don't want to focus too long on Android. So um, yeah, the Android performance is really smooth for everything, but um, I want to do just a quick gaming test, a benchmark, and then um, we'll just do speaker test, hook up my notebook to the projector to see the outcome. And here's the outcome of the benchmark, 277 single core, that's also almost nothing, multi-core 442. So yeah, the Android hardware inside of the project has a very low performance. We can see here it's an ARM processor, um, 1.2 gigahertz, one processor, okay, here it says four cores, but actually it's a dual core. And yeah, it's based on some all-winner chipset, okay. That's it guys, um, that's regarding the performance and now I would say let's do a quick movie test so let's try to play back something from the USB drive and let's also have a look at the audio quality from the integrated speakers.
Alright guys, I'm now near the projector. Let's do a quick um, music playback test. We are here in the same player as you've seen before and there we go. I will now put my microphone near to the speaker so just listen for yourself how it sounds and... Okay, let's try another one. Oh, you really can hear um, with a lot of bass, it, it really oversteers, and there we go again. So, if you don't listen to music with a lot of bass at maximum volume, it's okay, but the speaker is, yeah, not really the best, so it's just 2 watts. And yeah, um, the speaker is also kind of small, so don't expect too much from it. But I think it does the job for some movie nights with your girlfriend or whatever. So um, if you don't crank it up to maximum volume, it actually sounds okay. Right, right, guys. I've now hooked up my notebook to the projector, and yeah, as you can see, it has some problems with the auto keystone because um, yeah, it's ultra wide screen here. I'm not sure why, but this is because of the settings of my notebook. Can't really change that. Okay, um, you can see for instance here that the fonts, um, they are very small, so very tiny, very high resolution on the input. And the output is um, native 720p. And you will see actually, if you check this out, that fonts are really hard to read. Now it's way better than on the cheap Chinese um, projectors I've had. So you can actually read it, sales at reesnow.com here for instance. But if you really want to do a presentation and it's a bigger picture, then eh, um, all the letters will just consist out of two or three pixels and it's almost impossible to read anything. So this is more like a media projector. Now if you want to play back something, like here I have um, one of my old videos, so this is really old, this is actually the Meizu M2 Note or something like that, and you can see um, it's very colorful, it's strong, um, it's sharp, and yeah, for that it's okay, but if you want to display um, fonts or anything to read, then it's really hard to do. But here you can see there are lots of details here in this video and you can see everything and it looks really good. So for movie playback, for Netflix and chill with your girlfriend or whatever you want to, um, it's a good projector. But for an office projector where you really want to display important stuff, charts, where you have to read small things, I wouldn't really use it. But as you can see it's really fast, um, absolutely no lag, so if I open here something here in Windows 10, no problem at all, but yeah, I have to look now on the screen of my notebook because I can't even read the fonts here, so for that it's not okay. So for gaming, also it's okay, you can definitely play games, so first of all I tried um, H1C1 or Call of Duty, but I have to say that um, if you have to read something in the game, like if you play RPGs or um, Diablo 3 or something like that, it's almost impossible to do. So if you play um, yeah, simulators, shooters, where you don't have a lot of text, then I would say it's okay, but not for things where you have to read a lot of stuff. Okay, that was the testing on my notebook, and now let's come to the final conclusion about that projector. We are finally here at the end of this review and here comes my final conclusion. Let's talk a bit about the pros and cons, let's get started with the pros. Now it's able to really project in big screens, so really huge. It's strong for the size because it's very small and portable but still quite strong. Then it comes with Android, so it's a standalone projector, you don't need a computer with you which is really great. It has integrated speakers, well not the best quality but okay, and a low power consumption. Now regarding the cons, it's not really full HD, so it's actually 720p. If you try to read fonts on the screen, it's really hard to do because the resolution is not so high. 1000 lumens, yeah, it's not the brightest um, projector I've seen, but it should be quite sufficient if it's not too bright in your room. It's a bit noisy because of the fan. The hardware is kind of slow, so if you want to use it for gaming, you will be disappointed, but for office use, it's absolutely okay, or for some media playback. And it's very, very expensive with around 540 euros from TomTop. But yeah, this um, project is actually everywhere expensive. Alright guys, thanks for watching this review. If you're interested in this product, there's a link down below in the description, so make sure you check it out. Now, see you soon in the next project review. Have a nice day, and bye-bye.